Welcome, welcome. Welcome friends, how are you? So nice to see you again. Turn on my chat here. Dundavats, prayers and respects to all of you. So nice to see you, Satsuki Takahashi. Nitesh Patel, Chris Camp. Shadi, I don't know how to say your last name, Shadi. Vishnu Priya, Miss Kairava, Hari Bo, Kairava. Hare Krishna. It's nice to see you all. Oh, Magana, Tumirandasya. Yananjana Shivaka Chakshurun Gurave Nama Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Radhanata Swami Welcome everyone, welcome Brittany, welcome Nityananda Ram, Anne, how are you, so nice to see you Brittany, Jeevan and Andarupa, Srivani, Namahom Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinayane Nitesh, we go, we go, Namaste, Saraswate Devi, Gauravani Pracharine. Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschatya Deshatari Sri Vani, you please sing Panchadadra Mahamantra as you like. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya 
प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासादी गौर भक्त वृंद Beautiful. Vishnu, you please sing Panchadatta Mahamantra one time for us. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaurabhata Vrinda Vivo Jai Gaur Vivo Vivo Advaita Hari Prabhu So many dear friends joining today. Thank you for being here. I'm feeling, feeling very soft-hearted and in an intimate, sweet mood with all of you today. Thank you so much. Haribo! Haribo! So nice to see you guys. Where's Govind? Is Govind there also? <laughs> no pressure. No worries. I already get Govind Monday nights. He doesn't need to hear more from me. Jai. Okay. Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ah Shivani Devi please Hare Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare Hare Let's see, I had a nice, I got sent this nice thing, appreciation of the holy name from my friend Vishwambar's father, Bhadra Prabhu. Let's see what he sent. He always sends sweet things. Quoted from Adi Purana by Srila Sanatana Goswami and Hari Bhakti Vilas. There is no knowledge equal to my name, no vow equal to my, so name in Sanskrit is Nama, no vow equal to my Nama, no meditation is like the Nama, no result is like the Nama, no renunciation is like my Nama, no peace is like my Nama, no piety is like my Nama, no goal of life is like my Nama. My Nama is the supreme liberation, my Nama is the supreme goal, my Nama the topmost place, my Nama is the supreme abode. My Nam is the supreme devotion. My Nam is the supreme thought. My Nam is the supreme happiness. My Nam is the supreme meditation. My Nam is the life of all living entities. My Nam is the supreme Lord and Master. My Nam is the supreme object of worship. My Nam is the supreme happiness. Jai. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he speaks about how the name is the greatest medicine. And at times like this, we all need medicine. And sometimes we need medicine 
on the physical level and sometimes we need medicine also on the the level of the soul so i i would like to sing with all of your permission well i don't know all the people here we have aniruda prabhu we have let's see who else do we have we have rasa rasa's iphone welcome rasa's iphone um i already welcomed jivan and Handarupa. we have uh Thank you so much for being here. Let me share my screen with you. We have this beautiful bhajan by our Lord and Master, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So this is uh, all about the medicine, the medicine for our situation. <clears throat> Lord Goranga is calling, wake up, sleeping souls. Wake up, sleeping souls. How long will you sleep in the lap of the witch called Maya? You have forgotten the way of devotional service and are lost in the world of birth and death. So two things quickly we can say is, how is it? We're sleeping comfortably. How is it that Lord Chaitanya, Lord Goranga, the golden avatar, the, the, the godfather of Kirtan, as we know it, the great revolutionary. Why is he saying this comfortable place that we're sleeping is the lap of a witch? How is that so? How is that possible? Why is he saying it like that? And he says, we have forgotten the way of devotional service and lost in the world of birth and death. This doesn't seem like a world of birth and death. This seems like a happy place, a place of my family, a place of my friends, a place of my business and my success and my learning my home why is he calling it a place of birth and death mm, these are mysteries please shrivani can you read verse one and two in the bengali you see my screen here Jeeb Jago, Jeeb Jago, Goro Chandra Pale, Koto Nitra Jao Maya, Pishachiro Kole. Do I read the whole thing? Read the next, read the next one. Bhojibo Bolia Eshe, Shangsharo Pitare, Pulia Rohile to me, Abidaro Bhare. We can carry on. Let's carry on. Actually, you know what? I like, you know how I like doing it. I like breaking it up in between. We'll read in between. Vishnu, are you in the mood to read the English as we go? <laughs> sure, anytime, brother. Ah, Vishnu is always game. She's so bold. Bold in her service for Krishna, like a real bridge basi. Not, not shy like those residents of Dwarka. Oh, Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, Gora Chanda Bole. We can sing that together if you guys want to put yourselves on mute. Oh, Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, Gora Chanda Bole. Wake up, wake up, Jeeva Jago. He's waking the soul. Kotani Drajao Maya Pisha Chira Kone Kotani Pisha Shivani, please sing verse two. Bhoji bo boli ya ye she shangsharo pita re bhuli ya rohi le tu mi abhi taro bhare. Verse three and four.
Please, Vishnu. Lord Goranga is calling. Wake up, sleeping souls. Wake up, sleeping souls. How long? How long will you sleep in the lap of the witch called Maya? You have forgotten the way of devotional service and are lost in the world of birth and death. Three and four, please. I have descended just to save you. Other than myself, you have no friend in this world. I have brought the medicine that will wipe out the disease of illusion from which you are suffering. Take this Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We'll save the last one for the end. Tomar lo ite ami hoy lu avotar o ami bina bandhu aro ke ache Shivani, please tell us about the medicine. Inechi oshodhi maya nashi baro lagi hori nam maha mantra lao tumi magi. Oh, Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, Gora Chanda, Bohumi. Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, Gora Chanda, Bale. Kota Nidra Jau Maya Pisha Chirako Hone Kota Nidra Jau Maya Pisha Chirako Hone Vishnu, please. Last verse. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, I fall at the lotus feet, having taken this Mahamantra. Bhakati Vinoda Prabhu Charane Pariya. Say Hari Nama Mantra Loi Lo Magi Bhakuti Bino Da Prabhu Charone Puri Shri Hari Nama Mantra Loi Lo Magiya Jeeva Jago Jeeva Jago Gora Chanda Bole Jeeva Jago 
जीव जाग गोराचांद बाले जीव जागो जीव जागो गोरा चांद बोले जीव जागो जीव जागो गोरा चांद बाले कतो निद्रा जाओ माया पिशा चिर So before we discuss any philosophy, let's just sink into this chanting of this medicine. This medicine of the holy name, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, this is the medicine that will wipe out the disease. You know, this disease of illusion is such great illusion that we don't even know that we're suffering. We don't even know that we're in disease. Incredible. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, Gaura Chanda Bole. Kota Nidra Jao Maya Pisha Chirapu Last time please, Shivani Ji. Jeeb Jago, Jeeb Jago गोरोचात बाले कतो नीत्रा जामाया पिशाचिरो कोले How is it that we are sleeping in illusion, a world of birth and death? Uh, my Guru is Holiness Radhanath Swami. 
he's <clears throat> said before that um, humility, which is so often taught that we should be humble, humility is really nothing more than seeing things as they really are. And uh, I think that's very important for us if we want to. One of Einstein's colleagues, what did he say? He said, one of the definitions of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. Right. So we've seen what comes from doing it the way that we're doing it. So now if we want some other result, some other medicine is required, some other, we have to do something different. So I think uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he had everything that was achievable by someone in his position, and he had a longing for something more. And he's telling us that that more can be found in these three simple names, Hare, Krishna, and Rama. So even though some of us are still mostly confused about how this is possible, on the strength of the promise of such an eminent personality, we daily do our chanting, we daily do our japa. Not because we have some great realization, but because, because we have a little bit of faith in people like Lord Chaitanya, people like Narutam Das Thakur, people like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we've seen the example of their lives, the example of Śrīla Prabhupāda. And so on the faith of the example that they have given, we want, we want to taste what they're tasting. So for the last few minutes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare, Hare. Aniruddha Prabhu, please you sing Mahamantra one time for all of us. He's not right by the computer. Is he on mute? Let's see. Kairava Devi Dasi. Are you from Okinawa, Japan? Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, let's see. We have Aniruddha Prabhu now. Aniruddha Prabhu, you sing, and then we're going to get Kairava to sing. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai, beautiful Hare Kairava, please sing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Nama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Mother Ram Tulsi, my mother-in-law is here. You want to sing for us, Mother Ram Tulsi? Thank you. Let's see, is she is she gonna is she gonna bite? Is she gonna take the bait? Sing. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Oh, it's my daughter. The other Kairava. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, we have now Shastivar Prabhu, our host for the Bhajan study, has joined us. Shastivar Prabhu, would you please sing one round of Ma Mantra to close out our little warm up? Unmute myself. <laughs> That'll help. Hari Hari, everyone. Hari Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. 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 Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sachi Mata Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Oh, 
All glory to the Sam devotees. All glory to the Sam devotees. All glory to the Sam devotees. All glory to Shri Shri Guru and Kalanga. So, Hare Krishna. So we're here at a sixth section of Shri Kalyana Kopa Turu. So usually I start off with a kirtan. I think we have a very packed schedule today. So we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, we have the agenda. Can we put the agenda up for today? Jai, so this week we're going to, we're really going to dive into the words and teachings and the poetry of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. We've been kind of laying a foundation, speaking about some of the various aspects of how this presentation came about. But this week we're going to turn it over to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and listen to some of his wonderful songs, listen to the translations. And we're going to we're going to sing a very nice song that's related to some of these bhajans. We're going to play this song by Mangalananda Das. Hopefully the sound will come out where everyone can appreciate it. And then we're going to continue narrating uh, songs four to eight of the Upadesha section. <clears throat> and then we're going to get to a, a very nice stopping point, which is song nine, which goes into caste consciousness and the uh, false pride that it brings about. Sri Vani Mataji is going to sing that song and then His Grace Atmaram Prabhu is going to give a talk on that subject and then we'll open things up for for questions and, and answers. So we have a very nice agenda today. So let's move on. Let's see if we can recite the, the first song, Scientific Doubts. Let's go to the next slide. So we're gonna keep this slide up somewhat so that we can kind of meditate on all these different subject matters that Srila Bhakti no Thakur is going through in this part of the Upadesha. Very, very deep topics. Actually, we could spend a whole lifetime going through these various different topics. Um, in India and in the Sanatana Dharma world, these different topics are grouped into something that's called Satta Darshan, six different ways of looking at various philosophies and pretty much in this section, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur touches on mostly all of those, those different darshans or those different philosophies. I would say with the exception of the Shankya philosophy, he goes into all of the other ones. So 
let's start with scientific doubts resolved, and then we'll we'll move on from there. We're ready for this. Okay, Shivani Mataji. Monore, Tumi Boro Shundikto Antar Ashiachu Ishang Shari Bodto Hue Jarad Hare Jara Shokto Huli Nirantar. My dear mind, you are most suspicious and doubtful at heart. Having come into this material world, and becoming conditioned within the prison cell of this dull material body, you have become stupefied by being attached continuously to temporary eternal matter. External matter. External matter. Huliya shokiyo dham, shebi joro gato kam, joro bina na dakho apur. Tomar tumitto jini, achadito hoye tini, lukto pray dehero bhitar. Mind you are forgetting your own eternal home, and you are rendering faithful service to dull material lust. Thus, you cannot perceive anything beyond the gross, inanimate objects which are directly contacted by your senses. Your true nature as pure spirit soul has become covered over and remains hidden inside your body. Tumi to joriyo gyan, shada kori techo dhyan, tahe srishti koro chora chor. E dukho kohi bo kare, nitto poti pori hare, tuchho tatte kori le nirbhar. Dear mind, according to your materialistic knowledge and feeble enlightenment, you always meditate on so-called scientific subject matters, but all of that is simply limited to all the moving and non-moving things which are confined within the jurisdiction of this temporarily created universe. To whom shall I tell the story of my anguish? I have abandoned my eternal father simply to rely on such an unsubstantial and insignificant reality. Nahi dakho atto tatto chhari dile shuddha shatto atta hote nile aboshar atta ache kina ache shandeho tomar kache krome krome pailo ador my dear mind, you're not seeing the truth of the nature of the soul. And thus you have given up the natural pure goodness of your heart. You have put a stop to all spiritual activity by taking yourself far away from the soul. You always maintain the doubt, does the soul exist or not? And thus in you, so-called scientific meditations, you gradually become more and more fond of such doubting. Ei rupe krome krome poriya jorero bhrome apona apuni hole por. 
এবে কথা রাখ মোর নাহি হও আত্মচোর সাধু সঙ্গ কর অতপর my dear mind in this way you are falling into the illusionary mistakes of the insensitive world of matter and thus your own real self has become transformed into an entirely different false personality now just take heed of my advice dear friend and don't cheat your own soul in this way any longer but from now on please keep yourself in the company of the devotees of the lord বৈষ্ণবের কৃপা বলে সন্দেহ যাইবে চলে তুমি পুন হইবে তোমার পাবে বৃন্দাবন ধাম সেবিবে শ্রী রাধা শ্যাম কুলকাশ্রুময় কলে বর ভক্তি বিনোদের ধন রাধা কৃষ্ণ শ্রীচরণ তাহে রতি রহু নিরন্তর then all of your doubts will be long gone and your soul will become yours once again you will attain the transcendental abode of vrindavan my dear mind and there you will wait upon radhe shyam in your eternal spiritual body with a bounds in ecstatic shivering and torrents of joyful tears thus the real wealth of bhakti vinod is to keep continuous intense absorption in the beautiful lotus feet of shri radha and krishna jai jai let's go back to the slide again did we do a sound check on on mangalananda prabhu's song why uh, only in the spiritual realm prabhu Okay, well, hopefully it will come out okay. Yes. Let's put that slide up again with the various songs. I kind of would like to ponder on that for a second. You have the song ready, though, Mataji, right? Yeah. Okay. So... You want me to play the song right now? In a second. Put the slide up for... for a, a moment i would like to kind of preference the song so this prabhu that we're going we're about to hear is a a wonderful musician and poet in his own right and shila papa was was so expert because he was able to engage all the talents of the devotees in in lord krishna's service um put the other slide up madhuji the one that we had before with all the songs um sometimes these various very deep philosophical points that are are presented to us are somewhat difficult for us to be able to adapt to um particularly the impersonalist philosophy the slides with all of the songs not the notis one the 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 other one with the picture Oh, Shri Prabhupada and life comes from life. So, basically, from the Western standpoint, and even in India, I've spent quite a bit of time in India, basically the impersonal philosophy is something that's very, very strong and prominent. So, in this section, Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, is uh yeah can you put the slide back up uh it's up prabhu the powerpoint slide yeah yeah it's up i'm not seeing it i'm seeing the songs uh 
Gorvan, if you are you seeing the slider? No. No, only seeing the uh, the. Uh, you have to check which screen you're sharing. We're only seeing the uh, the the uh, the uh, songbook actually. So in the in the beginning of Krishna consciousness, to adjust the mind to these various philosophical points, and that's what I'm trying to express, is sometimes very very difficult. So. When I was coming to the temple in Henry Street, um, the, the, the program was so wonderful because the devotees took into consideration that many of the Westerners are not familiar with these various philosophies. And sometimes it's, it's a little difficult for them to understand them. So along with the class, the official class, we would have for Shadam, the other slide, back to the other one we would have prashadam, and then we would be, we'd have ecstatic kirtan, then we would have prashadam, and we'd be completely intoxicated with prashadam. And then we had these very nice multiple cultural presentations there in the temple. Sometimes there were plays, and sometimes there were, there were these wonderful devotees that would play music and sing the philosophy in a very musical, a melodious way. And Mangalananda Prabhu was one of those. And I felt that to be very a very wonderful way to be introduced to the philosophy of Krishna consciousness through these these songs. And um he it was just wonderful. He would sit there, Hari Kesh Prabhu was there and he would just sing these songs and sometimes we had plays. Uh, there was uh Lloyd Taksha um Mother Asagya, and we had these beautiful plays that would also depict the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. In this way, sometimes the medicine, the deep medicine of this philosophy is sometimes nicely administered by this, the, the sweetness of these songs. And that is an essence of what Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is doing by putting these philosophical points into poetry. And um, it's just it's it's just so wonderful to dive into this beautiful poetry that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is just, it seems so seamless, but you can imagine how gifted he was. Like Sri, Sri Vani Mataji, I mean, typically, I mean, you are Bengali ambassador. I mean, how many folks have you come into who are so poetic as these acharyas that could just put out these wonderful songs one after another in such a wonderful poetic manner to introduce these deep philosophical points in such a pleasant manner, isn't it? Yes, so, Prabhu. Hmm. So we can't take it for granted how wonderfully gifted was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And I also want to mention that Prabhupada also attracted many devotees and Mangala Nanda Prabhu is going to sing this song. You can play the song, Mataji. It's about this, the scientists and, and the impersonal philosophies. So if everyone can listen to this song very, very closely, it's very, it's very profound and it gives a, a very, very interesting presentation on how the scientists have come up with this, this impersonal materialistic philosophy. It's called protoplasmic crud. Can everyone hear it? Is it loud enough? All his parents both were monkeys who had crawled out of the mud. He was simply made of matter protoplasmic crud formed by subatomic bumping in a random sort of way with no goal and no direction simply animated play made complete by evolution he finally learned to walk Although nothing needed saying, he somehow learned to talk 
And he built the vast dominion in which each thing had its use. Saying all the speeds to nothing, life's a complicated rule. Then he gave himself a title, made himself a PhD. Told that we should hurry and know we're only chemicals, the chemicals will work. But now science has the answer to the problems of our race. They may build all the rockets to bring rocks from out of space. Yes, their ancestors were cavemen. And they've shown it through the ages by their inability to listen to the sages. Now the answer to this riddle, should they ever care to hear it, is that matter cannot move until it's touched by spirit. But it's hard to teach a monkey the things he cannot feel and it's hard to show a caveman what's beyond his cave is real but the hardest thing of all is showing the absurdity of claiming life's an accident to men with no humility So there you have it, protoplasmic crud. So in that beautiful picture, you see that Srila Prabhupada is speaking to his, his disciples on the morning walks. And oftentimes Srila Prabhupada would discuss these various philosophical points that we're about to hear from Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his morning walks. And he would elaborate on how these various contaminated philosophies ultimately bring the souls away from Krishna and take the souls into this vicious cycle of, of, of birth and death. So we we'll would like to request everyone to kindly listen to these beautiful songs we're about to narrate and meditate on the philosophy of how <laughs> Shri Thakur is, is explaining to our minds that ultimately these various different impressions that these philosophies give us are not helpful ultimately for the, the real benefit of the soul. So if there's no questions, let's, let's move um, I on. Just, I just have one question, Hare yes. Krishna. Hare um, yes, uh, the Bhagavad Gita does say that the mind, if we are able to conquer the mind, it's the best of a friend. But if we okay. fail, it's the worst enemy that we can have. And that's what Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his songs has said about conquering the mind. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to un understand the difference between our body, the mind, and intelligence. Are they like? Yes, so there is the mind, there is the booty, the intelligence, there's a hankara, the false ego. And then there is ultimately the soul. So Prabhupada described the difference between the intelligence is say you on a, you're not feeling very well, you have very suicide tendencies and your mind is telling you to jump off the roof. So it's the intelligence that's gonna 
come in is going to say that what is the use of jumping off the roof? It's going to be the intelligence that's going to present the arguments on the pros and cons of what the mind is trying to tell you to do. So there's a distinct difference between the intelligence. It's subtle. It's a very subtle difference because the mind, intelligence, and ego, they're very subtle. So your hunkara, which is your false identification with the material body and the material world, is very subtle. Similarly, the intelligence is also very subtle, but there's a subtle difference between the intelligence and the mind. So the mind is the thinking and the feeling that is very closely connected to the body, whereas intelligence is more closer to the soul. Yes. Does that help? Yes, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your question, Rinda Gopi Mata. Thank you. I Any just other? like this so much. Any other questions out there before we move on? Thank you very much for that. Okay, let's continue with reading our beautiful songs. Shrivani Mataji, are you ready? Mono, to me borrow it, Pamor. Tomar is sure hurry. Kaki cano puri hurry. Kamu marge, hojo debantor. My dear mind, you are certainly most while and wicked. Your Lord is Sri Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So then why are you abandoning him to worship the various demigods following the path of lust? Oro Brumho ak tattu Tahate shopia shottu Nishta gune korohu adur Ar joto debogon Mishra shottu agonon Nijo Nijo Karjer Ishar. The Supreme Lord is one absolute truth above and beyond the Brahman effulgence. Therefore, honor him only with resolved determination and completely dedicate the whole of your life unto him. As far as all innumerable demigods are concerned, their power and authority compared to his is only partial for they are each the absolute controller of only one specific type of work within this material world's administrative department. Shesh habe shanman kori, bhajo ak matra hori, jini sharbo ishar ishar, maya jar chaya shokti, tate uikanti ko bhokti, Shadhi kal kato nirantar. Maintaining polite respect for all these demigods, worship only Lord Hari, for he is the only supreme controller of all these other small controllers. Incessantly pass your time, my dear mind, by arduously endeavoring for intense single minded devotional service unto him whose total potency of maya is simply his insignificant shadow reflection. Mule te shinchi le jol, thakha pallo bero bol, shire bari nahe kajjo kar. Hori bhakti ache jar, sarbo devo bondhu tar, bhakti shabe kareno adar. Vitodo kohi chhe mon, Radha Krishna Sri Charan, Bhajo 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 Nirantar. By pouring water on the root of the tree, all the branches and leaves become strong and healthy. It is useless to try to pour the water on top part of the tree only, 
Similarly, all the demigods are the dear friend of one who has actual devotion to Hari. Indeed, they all show great honor and respect to the devotee of the Lord. Now Bhakti Vinod is telling you, dear mind, just worship always, just worship ceaselessly, just worship eternally the divine lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Jai, so that question on intelligence is very sweet because actually in these bhajans, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is, is acting in the mode of the intelligence preaching to his mind. So he's repeating again and again, bhajo, bhajo, bhajo. He's stressing so vehemently to get his point across to the mind. So the mind is very stubborn. So we have to constantly engage in devotional service in order to calm the mind down. Um, that's why ultimately at the end of the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, the best yogi, yogi nama pisavesham matkaten antaratmanam, sharavan bhajate yomam, samayukta tamomata. That the best yogi is the one who's constantly engaged in devotional service by the best means, of course, is to be chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. By this constant chanting, then we're able to cleanse the dirty thoughts that come up in the mind. So let's move on to the next song. মনো তবে কেন এ সংশয় জড় প্রতি ঘৃণা করি ভোজিতে প্রেমের হরি স্বরূপ লক্ষিতে কর ভয় মাই ডিয়ার মাইন্ড ওয়াই ডু ইউ হ্যাভ অল দি স্কেপটিক্যাল ডাউট ইউ ডিসপাইস দি মেটেরিয়াল ওয়ার্ল্ড জাস্ট টু ফেসিলিটেট ইউর মার্জিং ইন টু ব্রাহ্মণ বাট ইউ আর অফ্রেড টু ওয়ার্শিপ হরি দ্য লর্ড অফ এক্সটারিক লভ for fear of perceiving your own eternal spiritual form. Shurub korite dhyan, pache jaro pae sthan, ei bhaye bhava brahma mai. Nirakar niranjan, sharba vyapi sanatan, asharub kori chanish chai. This fear is due to your thinking that everything is made of Brahman. You imagine that if you were to meditate on your eternal spiritual form, that sometime later you may become influenced by forms made of the material energy. Therefore, you are convinced that the Absolute is without any form, spotlessly pure, all-pervading, eternal and formless. Abhav Dharmero Bashe স্বভাব না চিত্তে বসে ভাবের অভাব তাহে হয় এই তর্ক পাশ পরানন্দ পরাকাশ কৃষ্ণচন্দ্রে করহ আশ্রয় Therefore, your so-called impersonal Brahman realization has actually short-changed you from your true ecstatic, ecstasy. And thus, you simply remain in scarcity for want of true love. Renouncing this logical jugglery, just take shelter of beautiful moon-like Krishna, who is the ecstatic manifestation of supreme bliss. সাত চিদানন্দময় কৃষ্ণের স্বরূপ হয় সর্বানন্দ মাধুর্য নিলয় সর্বত্র সম্পূর্ণ রূপ এই এক অপরূপ সর্বব্যাপী ব্রহ্মে তাহা নয় 
in comparison to the impersonal Brahman, Lord Krishna's original personal form is composed of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. He's a reservoir and source of pure of pleasure and sweetness for all living entities. He is the complete form of beauty at all places and at all times. These are some of his special wonderful characteristics. None of these wonderful qualities can be found in the impersonal Brahman. Atoebo Brahmahotar Ango Kanti Shubistar Brihad Boli Atare Koi Brahmaho Parabrahmaje Sri Krishna Shorupo Shei Binodero Jahate Pronoi Therefore, I now declare that Brahman effulgence is actually the transcendental effulgence of Lord Krishna's body. It is his extremely vast and extensive aura. He who is the Brahman and above that the Parabrahma is the original form of Lord Sri Krishna for whom Bhaktivinoda has love and affection. So let's keep going. Mono, to be pori leki char, nobodi pe part kori, nai rotuno nam thori, bheker kochkochi koi le char. My dear mind, what kind of contemplable rubbish have you fallen into now? Studying intensely in the schools of Navadweep, you have been awarded the distinguished title of Nyai Ratna, a dwell of a logician. <laughs> Then disguised as a Vaishnava, you indulge in long, dull arguments based on logic and reasoning, considering such logic to be your best object of pursuit. However, such time-wasting arguments are exactly like the meaningless cro croaking of a small frog in the wilderness. In other words, such a sound is simply an unnecessary disturbance to the ears. Drobbadi Padarthogan Chaladi Nigrahusthan Shamobai Kori Lebichar Torker Choromophal Bhayankar Halahal Nahi Picharile Dunirbar To support your deceptive deceptive hopes and to get a firm footing on a bogus intellectual platform for oppressing and defeating others, you deliberate on an, on an aggregate of materialistic subjects such as knowledge of intrinsic word meanings in relation to all the things which you can perceive within this universe. However, the ultimate result of all your logical arguments and your labeling of material objections simply like a dreadful poison and you never consider that this poisonous influence is extremely difficult to check ridai kothino holo bhakti beej na barilo kishe hobe bhavashindu par anumile je ishwar she kulal chakradhar sadhon kemone hobe tar just see, dear mind, your heart has indeed become as hard as rock, and the seed of the creeper of devotion cannot possibly grow in such a barren land. So then how will you cross over this vast ocean of material existence? In this position, you can only guess about the nature of the Supreme Lord. Just as a clay pot maker will observe the vast creation, when the simple-minded potter guesses about the supreme he thinks that the entire material creation is just like a larger version of his own simple potter's wheel and that lord is the potter in other words 
By seeing a clay pot, you can guess that there must have been a potter to make it in the first place. This philosophy is very crude and contains no scope for developing love for the Supreme Lord. Shahujo Shamadhi Tyaji Onumiti Man Bhoji Tarko Nishtha Ridayu Tomar She Ridaye Krishna Dhan Nahi Paan Shukhashan Aho Dhik Shei Tarko Chhar Annyay Nair Mato Dur Karo Abirato Bhajo Krishna Chandra Sharot Shar Announcing your own natural samadhi and practically worshipping that which you can prove by simply guessing without actual realization. Your heart has become devoutly attached to arguing about such useless logic. Oh, to the hell with all this rubbish logic. It has not made a comfortable seat in my heart for Lord Krishna to sit on. My dear mind, I advise you to constantly kick out such an unreasonable argumentative mentality and just worship the moon like Krishna Chandra, the topmost truth. So in Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Jaiva Dharma, he elaborates on this subject matter a little bit more. And he, he narrates the story of, of one of these such persons who were so much completely, this person was named Naya Ratna also. He was a Digby Jai as well. And Lord Chaitanya also was a Digby Jai with Nyai. He was known as Nimai Pandit. And he had defeated so many of these um, Nyai Pandits in Navadweep. And he was the the topmost pundit in Navadip, and that's why he was known as Nimai Pandit. So there was a similar uh, pundit that became, this was after Lord Chaitanya disappeared, shortly after he disappeared, there was this one pundit that was very, very powerful. He had learned the Nyaya Shastras and he defeated everyone in the Navadip area and there was one such pandit that was so furious that he could not even come out of his house because he was afraid of getting defeated by this particular pandit. So he did a, <clears throat> a yagna, he went to a graveyard and he did a, a severe yagna in tapasya to uh, the Durga Devi for many, many days and just very, very severe tapasya. And it came to the climax where he was telling uh, Davy that if you don't come and help me, I'm going to kill myself. And we, he was offering his flesh in a fire and he finally was about to kill himself. And Davy came to him and said that, why are you uselessly doing this? The person that you are of, of, having so much hate for, he will very soon give up his study of Nyai. So you can go home and stop this useless tapasya that you're doing because he's not going to be your comp com competitor soon. So what happened is this, this one uh, Dikvijay, he was one time sitting by the bank of the, the Ganges meditating on various different philosophical points. And one of his students came up to him and said, have you heard of Nimai Pandit? Nimai Pandit's Nyai and his philosophical points, they are the most supreme. You should get some of his philosophical points. So this Pandit was able to get a book that had some of Lord Chaitanya's philosophical points. And all Lord Chaitanya's points were superior than anything he's seen. And he was completely amazed. And he began to, to meditate on Lord Chaitanya, Nimai Pandit, in such a devotional way. And, and, and he was just so amazed by Lord Chaitanya's philosophical points. So he finally eventually went to 
to uh, Navadik, where all of Vaishnavas were there, and he began to associate with the Vaishnavas. And just by him meditating on Lord Chaitanya, as Nimai found it, I'm going to cut the story short, he became a great, great devotee, a great, great Vaishnava, just by meditating on Lord Chaitanya's form as Nimai found it. Eventually, he associated with the devotees and he completely gave up all of his study of Nyai philosophy and, and the Nimai Pandit took, uh, was removed from his heart and Lord Chaitanya, the supreme transcendental uh, golden avatar took root inside his, his heart. So similarly, Srila Prabhupada has very nicely established all these ISKCON temples so that we can associate with the devotees and gradually by hearing these, these the kirtan, these narrations, that gradually the devotional service will fill within our hearts and the taste for these dry speculation and, and the personalism finally start to depart from our hearts. So let's, are there any questions on this point? I wanted to just make an observation. Um, one of the things I love about Bhaktivinoda Thakur is how autobiographical his work is. You know, even though it's high poetry and deep philosophy, he always brings a very intimate part of himself into his work, you know. So sometimes you could argue that someone like Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a nitya siddha, that he's always come from the spiritual world and he's always uh, directly connected with the Lord. But whether or not that's, uh, that's a fact, uh, in his poetry, he is really making intimate, like uh, you know, uh, admissions of his own, you know, consciousness. You know, so whether he's doing it for us or whether you know whatever, it's really encouraging. I find you know he really. So like this this last song where he's just he's just kicking himself like why do you keep with this thing with the trying to argue about stuff and be smart, you know, and have everybody appreciate your intelligence and arguing useless points. He's just like it hasn't done anything to install a throne for Krishna to sit in your heart. So how with it all? I just really appreciate that. It's like sometimes in a, you know, I grew up in the devotee community. I've been, you know, even though I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm 43, I have been a devotee for 43 years. You know what I mean? Like not that, not that I've been a devotee, but I've seen devotees for 43 years. And sometimes I know, I know that we can lose the plot as a community and get into arguing about things, you know, and it's nice to hear Bhakti and talk with If it's not getting you closer to bringing Krishna into your heart, to hell with all of the arguments. <laughs> yep. He says rubbish logic. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, what good is it? I mean, these Niais, they would just spend their whole lives just arguing and argument, right? So they were perfect candidates for Kali Yuga, right? Age of quarrel and hypocrisy. They would just spend their whole lives just arguing. So what is the use? So yeah, you're right. You know, why argue when we can be engaged in the nectarine service of Lord Krishna. So, yes. Any other comments? Okay, let's continue. Munu, Jogi Hutti Tomar Bashuna, Jogo Shastro Adhayan, Niyam Jam Shadhun, Pranayam Ashuna Rachuna. So, my dear mind, now you want to become a yogi? You read the various scriptures which describes different routines and techniques of sense control, breathing exercises, and sitting postures. Pratahar dhyan dhritti, samadhite hole brati, fall kiba hoile bolona, deho mon shushko kori, 
রহিবে কুম্ভক ধরি ব্রহ্মাত্মতা করিবে ভাবনা For attaining ultimate samadhi you undertake many difficult practices like withdrawal of the senses meditation and perseverance tell me what wonderful result will be there in exchange for such endeavor minimizing your bodily and mental activities and making the senses dull and dry you live by holding the breath in suspension Thus, you practice the yoga process by contemplating on the soul's nature as Brahman. Ashtadash shithi pabe, paramartha bhule jabe, vishwar jadi kori be kamona, sthulo jaro pori hori, shukhete praveshya kori, unarai bhugi be jato na. you will get the 18 mystic perfections and mistaking them to be the greatest object of reality you will entertain further wishes for still more wonderful opulences abandoning the plane of gross material and entering into the subtle astral plane you will simply undergo more troubles and turbulences all over again atta nitto shuddha dhan হরিদাস অকিঞ্চন যোগে তার কি ফল ঘটনা পর ভক্তি যোগাশ্রয় না থাকিবে কোনো ভয় সহজ অমৃত সম্ভাবনা বিনোদেরও এ মিনতি ছাড়ি অন্য যোগগতি কর রাধা কৃষ্ণ আরাধনা is simply to remain as the humble servant of lord hari in comparison to this eternal wealth what kind of spiritual result could possibly come from mundane so called yoga practice just take refuge totally in the yoga of devotional service and you will become fearless for then there is all likelihood of attaining you immortal nectar very easily bhakti vinod's humble entreaty is that you just perform the blissful worship of radha krishna my dear mind and immediately reject all other goals of so called yoga practices difficult for the yogis to swallow this pill because you spend so much time becoming a a nice hatha yogi and changing your diet and spending so much money in hatha yoga classes and when you're able to do some of those postures you you feel that it's a great accomplishment you can imagine the yogis that actually come to the stage of having these mystic cities how distracting that is so Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur is even speaking about he's re- he's rejecting the 18 mystic perfections. You can imagine how elevated his consciousness is. He just says it's a distraction, all those mystic, you know, blessings from yoga. It's another logic, well, that's a distraction, and all these perfections of yoga, those are distractions. Incredible. but some souls they spent many lifetimes just trying to perfect this art of yoga and once again we come back to intelligence that the the devotee that has that superior intelligence is able to perceive the fallacy of this approach very quickly just like when i first read the bhagavad gita and lord krishna was speaking in the 6th chapter of the bhagavad gita he's advocating this yoga practice very strong. I mean Lord Krishna had me completely convinced. Yes, I was ready to get on the next plane and go to the forest in 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 India. <laughs> If you listen to the 6th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. But Arjuna was supremely intelligent and he was and he actually practiced these austerities before 
as we all know that Arjuna, he stood on one leg and practiced austerities, severe austerities in a forest. But when Lord Krishna preached this whole philosophy of going to the forest and becoming a yogi and the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna immediately rejected it. That the mind is restless. How the heck can I perform this yoga? Isn't it? So that's the supreme intelligence of the pure devotees, the advanced devotees. So let's move on. Next song. Ohe bhai, mono kano brahmo hote jai. Ki ashchur jokabo kake. Shado pasho bolo jake. Tate kano apone mishai. Oh brothers, why does my rascal mind desire to merge into the Brahman effulgence? How astonishing it is. And to whom shall I admit it? My dear mind, please tell me. Why you want to merge yourself with that supreme Brahman, considering it to be the most worshipable thing? Bindu nahi hoy shindhu, bamun na sporshe indu, renu ki bhudaruru pai, labhu matru aparad, anumartha hoy bad, shajujjo badir hai hai. A drop of water certainly has the qualities of the ocean, but is obviously not the ocean itself in quantity. A small drop cannot possibly touch the moon, despite his best intentions, and a handful of dust can never assume that it has become a mountain. Alas, alas, such a pitiful position is foolishly upheld by those who advocate the philosophy of merging into the Lord's bodily fulgence. The only profit from such doctrine is that it will make one become offensive towards the Lord, which will hinder one from attaining the supreme objective of devotion. E hanu duranto buddhi, taji karu shatta shuddhi, Pritira Upai Shajujo Nirban Adi Shastri Shabdo Dakujodi Sheshab Bhuktir Ongejai Renouncing this mischievous mentality of trying to artificially merge, my dear mind, just purify your existence and start searching for the process of getting real love for Krishna. If you would try, if you would just try to understand the statements of the revealed scriptures, you will find that all the conceptions like Sayujya, oneness with the Lord, and Nirvana, the highest blissful absorption, are actually different features which are automatically achieved by devotion. For these benefits are unconsciously following the process of service to the Lord. Krishna Priti follow my Tatta Moshi Adi Hai Shadhoko Charumi Krishna Pai Akhondo Anondo Mai Brinda Bono Krishna Lai Poro Brumho Shorupo Janai Statements like Tatva Masi, you belong to Krishna, are fully permeated with real tangible love for Krishna and meditating on such Vedic statements helps the aspiring devotee to ultimately attain the shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Then one will gain residence in Krishna's transcendental abode of Vrindavan, which is completely pervaded with supreme undivided bliss. Thus one will come to know the original personal form of Parabrahma, who is situated far beyond the impersonal Brahma effulgence. Ta hote kirano jal, Brahma rupe shobhe bhalo, Mai ko jagoto chamotkar, Maya baddha jeep tahe, Nirobrito hoite chahe, Shudja bhabe khaddutter pray. 
The network of transcendental rays emanating from his body form the splendorous light known as Brahman effulgence, which is powerful enough to amaze the entire collection of material universe. If any of the conditioned souls desire to become content by merging into that glowing light, then that would be just like being satisfied at night with the glow of lightning bugs in the absence of the sun. The insignificant light emitted by such insects will certainly never serve as a replacement for the radiant sun. And similarly, the devotees of Krishna is never content to merge with the Brahman effulgence, which is very feeble in comparison to the Lord's original form of bliss. Jyoti Kopu Bhagga Daye Shadhu Guru Shamasraye Brindavano Shomukhete Bhai Krishna Krishna Hoye Tabe Kudra Rosh Onubhabe Bromhoj Hari Poro Bromhet Hai Shukadir Shujibon Korob Hai Alochono Edash Dhuri Chetobopai If ever there is a dawning of one's good fortune and one will see Vrindavan shining gracefully before his very eyes due to taking complete shelter of virtuous devotees and spiritual masters. Then becoming irresistibly attracted by Krishna, one runs and chases after his Parabrahma. Thus, he simply leaves aside the insignificant realization of merging with the Brahman infulgence, forgets completely overwhelmed by the slightest contact with Krishna's transcendental mellows. Discuss and deliberate on this, my dear friends. Make your life successful, just like the great sages like Shukadev, Nara, Vyas, etc., who all gave up Brahman realization by becoming attracted by Krishna. And then the servant Bhakti we know will hold on to your feet. Wonderful. So now we move into another trick that the mind gets wrapped into, and that is the Bali concept of caste pride. So here's our song for the week. It's going to be sung by Srivani Mataji, and then Atmaran Prabhu will comment on this song. Another, another, uh, modern version of caste pride is uh, political affiliation. Yes, yes. Race affiliation. In India, since everyone is considered to be Indians, so they don't get wrapped on so much the race thing, but they do get wrapped on the color of the skin in India very much. But in the Western world, you have so many different races. So it's the, the race, the fight and conflict between the races that is prominent. So go ahead, Madhati. We're listening. Hi, Krishna. Munore Kano Ar Parno Kiman. Munore Kano Ar Parno Kiman. Murile pato ki hoye, jamodu te jabe loye, na kori be jati ro shanman, munure kano ar borno kiman. Jodi bhalo karma karo. Sharko bhag ata paro, jodi bhalo karma karo, sharko bhag ata paro, tate vipra chanda lo shaman, tate vipra 
চন্ডালো সমান নরকে ও দুই জনে দণ্ড পাবে এক শনে জন্মান্তরে সমান বিধান মনোরে কেন আর বর্ণ অভিমান তবে কেন অভিমান লয়ে তুচ্ছ বর্ণ মান তবে কেন অভিমান লয়ে তুচ্ছ বর্ণ মান মরণ অবধি জর মান মরণ অবধি জর মান উচ্চ বর্ণ পদ ধরি বর্ণান্তরে ঘৃণা করি নরকের না কর সন্ধান মনোরে কেন আর বর্ণ অভিমান তবে যদি কৃষ্ণ ভক্তি সাধ তুমি যথা শক্তি বৈষ্ণবে না কর অপমান বৈষ্ণবে না কর অপমান আদার ব্যাপারী হয়ে বিবাদ জাহাজ লয়ে কভু নাহি করে বুদ্ধিমান মনোরে কেন আর বর্ণ অভিমান তবে যদি কৃষ্ণ ভক্তি সাধ তুমি যথা শক্তি সোনায় সোহাগা পাবে স্থান সোনায় সোহাগা পাবে স্থান সার্থক হইবে সূত্র সর্বলাভ ইহা মূত্র বিনোদ করিবে স্তুতি গান মনোরে কেন আর বর্ণ অভিমান মনোরে কেন আর বর্ণ অভিমান থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাছ মাধু জি দাস দাস Okay, translation. Oh my dear mind, why do you still have this vain egoistic pride to do your family cast? The fact is that we are a sinful man dies, then no matter who he is, Yamadutas will carry away without paying the slightest respect to his caste and family lineage. Even if one does good works and enjoy celestial pleasures in the heavenly planetary system, he's still not safe or after his good karma is exhausted, he gets equal treatment along with brahmanas as well as dog eating outcasts. In hell, both persons will receive equal punishments in one place and for their next birth, equal ruling and administer. So then why do you maintain such false pride, dear mind? Your your insignificant caste vanity lasts only to up to the time of your death. 
when it will be taken away along with your body. My advice to you is that please don't despise any other caste. If you have taken a so-called high birth in this present life, don't search for suffering in hell by unnecessarily scoring another apparent low-class birth. If you have been born into a position of aristocratic social honor, then just live as a humble, learned Brahmana, dear brother. But don't ever dare to abuse or insult any Vaishnava. For a caste Brahmana to oppose or challenge a Vaishnava is just like the story of a poor ginger salesman who sells only a few paisa worth of ginger roots in the market every day. One day he saw a huge ship laden with very costly cargoes mourned on the river. He went over to the ship and started demanding information about the cargo, the price, the destination, the profit, and so on. He's simply insignificant, but he wants to lord it over such huge business affairs of the seagoing vessel. And after some time, the ship's crew said, well, who are you anyway, that you are interrogating us so? And he told them, I just sell a little ginger in the bazaar. So if a Brahmana tries to dishonor a bona fide Vaishnava, then he simply makes useless conflict and he never becomes wise. So if you just combine devotion to Krishna with an effort to the best of your ability, my dear mind, then you will be situated in the perfect combination of spiritual activity. Then whatever caste or material position you happen to be situated in will become really successful and you will attain all desirable things in this way. And Bhakti Vinod will sing the praises of your glories. So, Mother, do you want to introduce your, your wonderful Pita G and he can bring all this together for us? I know this caste business is a big, big problem in, in India. It's a great, great distraction. Over to you, Prabhuji. Yeah. Daddy, can you turn your video on so everyone can see you? Okay. Hi, Bol. Thank you very much. Um, um, my father, his name is Atmaram Prabhu, and um, um, let's see. He spent my, his whole life in the service of Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. He died. Uh, they met Srila Prabhupada the first time Srila Prabhupada visited Surat, which was in 1971. And... Uh, my father and mother both are engineers, both were engineers. They gave up and uh, surrendered their life when they met Srila Prabhupada. Um, my father used to work in NASA at one point and was a chief engineer when the first satellite was launched. And my mother was also a lecturer in NIIT in Surat. Uh, it's a very uh, popular esteemed engineering college. Um, they rendered service in U.S. in different temples, like Iskon Detroit, um, in Chicago. Uh, in 1975, they personally met Prabhupada. So in 76, in L.A. is where they received their initiation. And um, basically, since 1971, they've been serving Srila Prabhupada in numerous ways of college preaching, prasad distribution, individual mentoring, um, teaching us uh, and raising his children in the best Krishna conscious environment. Nice. And um, I think the glories are endless. So without further delay, I'm going to let him uh, talk about Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And uh, my father continuously reads a lot of Chaitanya Charitamrut. I've seen ever since I was a child, it just never stops. So be ready for some Mahaprabhu's nectar coming in. Hi, Mahaprabhu Gita. Thank you. Uh, 
सो समथिंग हरिबोल ओके ऑल ग्रोइस टू ऑल ऑफ यू वैष्णव पंचकल्पत रूपे जय जैसी कृष्ण चैतान्य प्रभु नित्यानंद सी अद्वैत गदाध शिवास हरि गोर भक्त विंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे सो जस्ट लाइक आवर गुरु परंपरा कृष्ण कविराज गोस्वामी से आई हैव नो क्वालिफिकेशन टू राइट दिस सैतना चारिता मृत I'm simply copying the writings and the data collected by Swarup Damodar Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Raman Rai, and so and so forth. So many other acharyas and devotees, and I'm purifying myself. So following in that footsteps, not imitating, but just following in the footsteps. I have no qualifications. Simply I. Take this opportunity, which is given by all of you, to represent Prabhupad towards as it is. Don't feel bored or tired, uh, because I have nothing of my own. So going back to the topic, uh, lots of topics are covered up uh, today in this bhajan stuff, but we not Thakur. It's a very long topics, but just particularly concentrating here on the caste pride, is which is false, and uh, we can. And there is lots of things to say about the mind, but uh, that's a big subject matter, so we may just touch a little bit. But here, when we look at Prabhupada Bhagavad Gita as it is, where we see Prabhupada himself. inside this writings and which is exactly coinciding with all the previous acharyas including sila bhakti vinod thakur and everybody just some words are presented such a way that we can understand them so this shloka in fourth chapter every one of us know mostly it says chaturvarnya ma sistam guna karma vibhaga sah tasya kartaram api ma अनचेजेबल सो when we go into the purports uh, it clearly i will read the purport it won't take too long how many minutes i have to continue how long 10 okay. minutes prabhu just 10 minutes 10 minutes okay. to 3 minutes all right 10 minutes <laughs> okay yeah it's already 23 anyway okay so the lord is the creator of everything and everything is done by him sustained man by him and destructed by him and everything so uh, he has created the four varnas and four ashramas brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra brahmacharya grahastha vanprastha and sanyas according to the work ascribed to them and their education so that education thing is also uh, clarified in this uh, shloka uh, which i'll just uh, 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 well yeah it is there in seven, uh, 16 chapter of the bhagavad gita uh, the first uh, one two three shlokas and in the purport very interesting to understand 
the social institution known as Varnasram Dharma, the institution dividing society into four divisions or the caste. It is not meant to divide human society according to the birth. Such divisions are in terms of the educational qualifications. They are to keep the society in a state of peace and prosperity. So these two important sentences, three actually, that uh, society is not divided according to the birth and uh, educational institutions, in qualifications, and then what will happen by that? Ready, uh, something came. Uh, this um, peace and prosperity in the society will prevail. So this, um, our, uh, I mean, the present uh, civilization or the civilization from long, long time uh, has lost the Vedic culture and Vedic education in its proper manner, in its, in, in the Prabhupada terminology, in its as it is manner. So they do not know this thing and hence the whole civilization has turned into these uh, different kind of foreign impressions and always get caught and get dragged by them. So the originality is getting lost and lost and lost and then it gets deteriorated more and more and more. But when we talk about this uh, Prabhupada as it is writing, as Prabhupada has already mentioned here, this is educational. So it is not stamping. Yes, one thing is there in seventh chapter of the Gita, Bhagavad says, Krishna says, that I give the opportunity to the one who is born in that particular caste system where there is an opportunity. But that does not mean that he has already become that. Prabhupada used to give the example of president or the prime minister or king. That the king's son is not king unless he occupies that qualification to become king. And then he is being enthroned because of the qualification. So same way, uh, the Brahmana is not a Brahman simply being born in the Brahman caste. But he has the opportunity. But when he doesn't take that opportunity, he can be Sudra or he can be lower than a Sudra. And I remember attending Prabhupada lecture in 75 in Chicago when the temple was in that uh, um, uh, YMCA building. Prabhupada gave a lecture in the early morning and Prabhupada talked on this sloka especially uh, that uh, uh, human society has created fifth class, sixth class, seventh class human beings where they are not even close to fourth class. So what do we expect from them? We cannot expect no peace and no prosperity, only the troubles and disturbance and mass killing and everything like that, corruption and everything like that. So all over the world, that's what it is going on. Even in India, it's going on that way. So that is not recommended. As we have seen, our uh, most beloved Bhaktivinoda Thakur's bhajans, every every point of spirituality even he has rejected. he has condemned it because uh, none of them those teachers also none of them lead to the spiritual students to the highest goal of life because those teachers themselves has not learned to that level so they may teach hatha yoga impersonal brahman aphasians Karma Khan section, Gnan Khan section, Raj Yoga, Kundalini, this, that, so many. But none of them say that ultimate is that Yogi Nama Pisa Margate Nandar Atmana. So ultimate is to have the surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. They are afraid to use the word uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead. So uh, therefore, even when they, these yogis and all these different, you know, spiritualists, when they enter into our Hare Krishna temple or any other Krishna's temple, which may be managed by some uh, society in India, they don't even offer their dandwats. They just look at from outside and uh, as if it's a, you know, visit of some place. 
So we can see these writings are not just to criticize or condemn or neglect or reject, but they are the truths which is existing against Sadhu, Sastra and Guru. That's a key point. They have not kept up with the Sastra even. And because of that, the people are misled because Mahajana Yena Gata Sapanta, you know, these leaders who lead the society in a wrong educational system and hence they cannot derive the benefit, uh, total benefit of the spiritual life, the ultimate life of goal, uh, ultimate uh, aim of the human life. Uh, so that's why this whole, what we call in America, hodgepodge is happening. And these, uh, these are all other uh, different countries, they don't have that background anyway. So Prabhupada says that uh, the devotees of Hare Krishna in Chaitanya Charitra, Prabhupada write many, many times, he says they become serious and sincere. And Prabhupada, even at that young, uh, even at that uh, young moment time in 70s, he has started saying, uh, even in the press conferences and many, many places, that's because these devotees are serious and sincere. I am hopeful and I am leaving my responsibility in their hands. They as an instrument to pray Lord Sri Krishna and spread the message through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gauranga Mahaprabhu. So uh, it, is a, it is a truth that the devotees are, there are majority sincere and serious devotees of Hare Krishna. And because of that, our Krishna consciousness movement has spread all over the world and it has increased. And we all are highly indebted, including myself, to our Jagat Guru Devasi Bhaktivedanta Swami Sila Prabhupada and also many, many great devotees, you know. Uh, so they, uh, we, are, we all are working on this educational system to introduce this uh, caste system on an uh, educational level. Means the person, a devotee should get a proper qualification according to his mentality and his karma of the previous lives. So they can be trained up in this Krishna consciousness process by which they can become a perfect or as perfect as possible Brahman, as perfect as possible Kshatriya and all others, you know, uh, Vaishya and Sudra. And that way, the, this example of our ISKCON devotee society can form a group by which they can present and handle the uh, problems of the human society today. And they can reestablish this Varnasram Dharma. And if, uh, but Bhakti, you know, Thakur and all the Acharyas have introduced is that how much possible is different story. But the thing is, to make it short and simple, everything has been blended into Hare Krishna chanting. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Jare Dako Tare Kaha Krishna Upadesh, Amare Agnatare Tavadesh. So every devotee has a qualification to go out and say to anybody, chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. One may be grasty, one may be this, one may be that. One time one grasty devotee asked question to Srila Prabhupada. He says, I'm in this responsibility, that responsibility. I, what can I preach, Prabhupada? Prabhupada says, can you go out and tell somebody, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. Let's offer our respect for obeisance unto him. And he says, you have conveyed the full message. A consciousness, he says. So, this way, right now, we all devotees are trying to spread uh, the real human being, at least human being, Sanatan Dharma, which is to add up this chanting of the holy name of Hare Krishna Mahamantra and put it in their life so they all can be saved. Nobody can save the body. The body has its uh, destiny of birth and destiny of death. Nobody can stop that whether it is through disease or without disease, whatever it could be. So, but the key point is 
do spread this Hare Krishna Maha mantra into their hearts and it has to be done with a heart's content. It should not be done in a superficial way. Of course, our Gurudev Prabhupada is very, very merciful. We are highly indebted to him. Nothing, we, no way to pay that debt. But uh, we can just try our level best to this Harinam. And when we read these purports and everything, ultimately that's what this uh, writing says to us, you know. Even in this also, see here, and lastly, it is said, you know, uh, in between also it says, a Krishna is transcendental to this system of four divisions uh, of the human society. A person in Krishna consciousness is always transcendental to all divisions of human society, whether we consider the divisions of the community, nation, or the species. So it does not, it goes beyond everything, beyond the conception of caste, color, creed, nation, language, anything material education, everything. But there is a, a education involved about this Krishna consciousness. And that education has to be given out in the form of Prabhupada books. Because when we meet somebody, we exchange for a very little period of time. And uh, in this Prabhupada books, it is there with them permanently all the time. So this way we can spread Krishna consciousness for the benefit of the entire human society because it has surpassed everything and it has practically proven it has practically proven all over the world no matter what religion what caste what anything may be and devotees are all that the all of us devotees are trying to work in the best of their possibility as we can Prabhuji, with the, the, yes with that with that being said and i just from my own experience, we yes. know that Lord Chaitanya, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, had to deal with this whole business of yeah. caste pride. Mm -hmm. Similarly to Six Goswamis and down to right. Bhakti Vinod Thakur and then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And, and then Srila Prabhupada also was criticized greatly by the, the Brahmana community in, in, in India very yes. vigorously. Mm. So you have seen a lot. You are senior here, and I, mm. and and I would just like to know that, according to your perception, have you seen a a, a gradual decrease in this type of of con caste consciousness, or have you you think that the endeavors of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books and prasadam and the temples? and everything that we've done to spread Krishna consciousness in around the world. Have you seen a improvement in this type of mentality and particularly in a, in a, the Brahmin community over? Yes. Um, it's, it's happening, but when we take the population of India, only the India population that in that percentage wise, it's in a, very, very gradual way it is happening. It's not that massive or you can't say 10% or 20%. It's not like that. Hello. Percentage. Hello. What is it? Hurry ball. Yeah, you can continue. Oh. So, okay. To have it effective among large uh, uh, population wise, uh, it has to be still uh, more massive uh, preaching should be done by our ISKCON society. Because that is the only society which is establishing this uh, system according to Guru, Sastra and Sadhu in Parampara all the way up to Krishna. So it has to be increased still more than what it is still going on. Because the other bombarding of the materialism is also, uh, as we know, a thousand times more faster. Mm. So to, uh, yeah, so we can, okay, if we may not go in the world called competition, but our sincerity and, and, uh, and uh, sincerity and what is another word I say, uh, seriousness, sincerity and seriousness by our devotees. But it has to, be done with the young masses of devotees in a very vigorous way. 
but they have to be themselves properly educated also because mm. i experienced some of the devotees they are immature and they represent prabhupad immaturely when it comes to deal with a common mass of people so that kind of offense is offense on offense on devotee part also and that situation has full manner just like we were distributing books in a public places like uh, airports and you know uh, parking in so many places and later on when we came to some <laughs> whatever guidance or intelligence uh, we we kind of cooled down you know so in india also this mistake does happen some young devotees 5 years 10 years 7 20 20 years he go and represent prabhupad in a not proper manner i mean you know because when the, when you when you talk with these brahmins some of them or majority of them who are old people i'm talking about they have the knowledge of gita so you can just uh, fire and bombard with uh, you know because he is not krishna conscious you have to bring him to the krishna consciousness so that mm. is the situation at present of the brahmins but there are very quite uh, members of uh, brahmin communities they favor krishna consciousness yes they mm. do they mm. say this is very wonderful and this is the best he, uh, oh, i personally yes. met uh, a couple of them and they say what a power your guru has that he can he can make the malachas and avadas into the brahmins and they, they say we see the qualifications your iskon brahmanas have unparalleled and unbeatable they say they don't even drink tea they don't even coffee so there are some sensitive good ones also and there are many especially when we go near tirupati those hmm. brahmins are very very because yeah they they are in coming contact with the iskon devotees Hmm. and they preach properly so they respect also properly so it's a mixed thing but still lots of massive preaching is required to bring it to some percentage like say 20% 30% like that so it it will happen i think because chaitanya mahaprabhu want this movement to go on 10000 years minimum or more <laughs> is that satisfactory or how do you think Wonderful, wonderful. I I appreciate your your perspective. Ramatosi Mataji, are you out there? She has some very nice comments. So in she, in, in the chat, there. she was. Are you there. still there, Mataji? Is she already gone? I'm still here, Prabhu. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really appreciate your comments. You have anything that you want to inject? Uh I just that. Uh, so definitely, Chinada peace, Mishina. I feel that is the. the key verse in humility yes. and if we live by that verse and we should see everyone greater than us and we shouldn't think much for ourselves at all and offer respects to everyone so i always try to live by that verse and that's the verse i go to all the time you know cuz that's just such an important verse for all of us hmm hmm Yeah, so basic course is okay. So go ahead. And you know, and Bhakti Vinod says, I mean, he's always talking about humility and pride and respect. He also says, how can we, you know, uh, so to live by that verse, he just talks about. I was re I'm reading a lot of his writings, and he talks about the grass, you know, how it's trampled, and it just never. it never springs back and it just doesn't react and so i think we have to be like that also but it's hard to do that it's easy to do but it's really hard sometimes to do that i mean i'm so humble all the time it's just everyone else around me that causes all the difficult exactly gora <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> So we've we've gone beyond our time but it was just a pleasure just sitting here with all you wonderful devotees and I really appreciate everyone's patience to I mean this is the real nectar it's just hearing and chanting and everyone sharing their experience and 
Admiral Prabhu, thank you so much for your so many years of, of perseverance in, in Krishna consciousness. You're one of those rare souls that met Srila Prabhupada in, in those days and, and surrendered. Um, I, I really want to thank, thank you for your wonderful example. I, I mean, I was there in those days in the 70s. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be very frank. When we saw Indian body folks in our parking lots, we ran the opposite direction. Because, <laughs> because they would severely chastise us. But we approached Indian families in the 70s. They would immediately tell us, what is this? I am knowing Krishna. Krishna is from my place. Why are you bothering us? <laughs> but to speak of surrendering and that, as Ramatosi Mantra was talking about that humble mentality, mm. especially mm. the ones that came to America, they, they were not humble at, at all. So yeah, you're one of those rare souls that came in contact with the pure devotee and you realized that, you know, you, you needed to surrender to that, that, that wonderful spiritual master and get his mercy. So thank you so much for being so smart. And then Thank you. creating such a wonderful family uh, as well. I will uh, just recite one sloka from the Chaitanya Chaitramrat. It will take only hardly one minute. Chaitanya Chaitramrat. So this is a nice way we can end with this. Uh, thank you so much to Shastivar Prabhu and thank you to Vishnu and to Srivani, the core crew, and thank you to the tech crew, Rat Nation, everyone making this up. Well, thank you all for joining. I know a lot of you joined late. Radhana Swami and other devotees, so many devotees doing doing webcasts and stuff all over that it's like uh, you know my friend yeah. Nana keeps joking like there's an official email that came out from Zoom. Dear Hari Krishnas, please stop hogging all the internet with your conferences. <laughs> devotees are just hours and hours of spiritual kata, you know. But um, anyway, thank you so much. I'll just give it back to Admiral Prabhu. I just want to thank everyone so much and. Uh, and uh, if anyone's interested in anything, uh, Krishna, please put your uh, email up there again. We do this every time. Um, and we're, uh, yeah, we're wrapping out for this week. Thank you so much to Shasti Prabhu, our fearless leader. For thank you, Shasti Prabhu. Thank you, Gora. Thank you, Vishnu Priya. Thank you, all devotees. Yeah, so thank you. Shasti Prabhu put so much TLC into those uh, PowerPoints. If you look carefully, that's quite, there's a lot of love and attention, all the details and everything he's putting there to bring us deeper into this meditation. So let me give it back. If, unless Shasti Prabhu or anyone else uh, wants to say anything, I'm going to hand it back to Amaran Prabhu. Come on, page 102. Oh. I thank all of you too, and I appreciate your endeavors. It looks like you are presenting right there. It's all happening. It is so wonderful way, and in a, such a heart's content, you all are doing it. I'm very highly indebted to all of you too to give me this opportunity to say a few words. Now we will have just little reading about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord's feelings of separation, and that's a chapter in Chaitanya Charitamrat. He says, Krishna Leela Mandala Sudha Sankha Kundala Gadiya Che Sukha Karikara Se Kundala Kane Pari Trishna Lao Thali Dari Asa Juli Kandera Upara Translation is the Ring of the Krishna's Rasalila, manufactured by Sukadeva Goswami, the most auspicious craftsman, he is as pure as an earrings made from a consul. The yogi of my mind is wearing that earrings upon his ear from a from a from, from a guard he has carved out the bowl of my aspirations, and he has taken the bag of my ex expectation on his shoulder. So this is a prayer to the mind about uh, Krishna's feeling, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu feeling love in separation. And it's so wonderful like this, like Prabhupada says, read the Krishna book before you take rest at night. So same way this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, 
when we read our mind get cooled down and get filled with this past times of Krishna and they nourishes us for the rest of the night so we all can get very peace and happiness. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. There are many slogans. Jai like Haribo Prabhuji. Jai Jai Haribo. 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 Thank you Hare all. Hare Krishna. Good night everyone. Good night Hare everyone. Hari Hari Bol. Wonderful to see you all. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you, Gauravani Prabhu. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna